Hey guys, welcome back. Keith and Julie here. <laughs> Julie thought you might be interested in me talking about smoking, of or or not smoking. Not actually. how he quit smoking. Yeah, or how I I'm not smoking, and uh, I thought I would because I in in and she's probably got a lot she can contribute where this is concerned too. But I hope it might help others. Not just when it comes to smoking, because because this this principle you can apply to pretty much anything, really, and so like a lot of times, what people do, they decide that uh, they want to stop smoking, and so they they make this great you know proclamation: I will never smoke another cigarette again. I I, I hereby quit on this day, and. Uh, most of the time, as you know, people can't sustain it, and quickly they're they're back to their old habit and feel bad on top of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Now that because yeah, they've failed. Yeah, now they've got guilt on top of that, and uh, and the the bad maybe the bad opinion of, of other people or themselves. Yeah, and especially themselves, and they've lost credibility with other people or themselves because they. They said that they would do something or that they wouldn't do something, and then they, they weren't able to do it. Um, I, you know, it's something for me that, uh, and I really did like smoking a lot. I really did. How long and, did you smoke? Uh, since I was, um, you know, gosh, I don't know. 16, 17? Probably about, yeah, 17 or so. And started when, smoking. And when did you start limiting yourself? Probably, uh, oh, I don't know on the limiting part. Because, because that's part of it. That's that's sort of what I did. Mm -hmm. Is anyway, I smoked most of my whole life, but some years back, I decide I, I started thinking. Okay, you need to really maybe start thinking about making some some changes in your life because you're you're not a spring chicken anymore, and more it, of a light summer chicken. You know, the check engine light was beginning to show up <laughs> once in a while. That kind of got my attention. And I thought, you know, I, I'm going to really have to, you know, reel myself in a little bit or, or make some moderation, you know, or, or changes to, to things. And so what I, what I did, um, I, I kind of experimented with stuff to see what might work. I tried some different things, and that's something that maybe, you know, there may not be one thing that works for, right. for everyone, and you might have to kind of work not just smoking maybe you're trying to lose weight or get or, a, cut back on sugar maybe, or stop drinking coke maybe you're trying to learn a new language right. maybe you're trying to learn to play piano or maybe you're trying you know get some accreditations or, or stop gossiping so yeah, much yeah whatever anything. it is uh yeah i mean that's good to, to mention that or you know just uh negative attitude sure. or or uh uh, complaining, complaining, <laughs> complaining, yeah, yeah. See, I was thinking of her. <laughs> I was thinking of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That's funny. So, um, what I did, I I didn't just say, okay, next next Monday I'm gonna not Quit have, forever. I'm gonna stop smoking. I didn't I didn't do it that way. I just gradually I started making some small changes, and rather than light a cigarette up first thing in the morning which I, is weird was your habit at one time it was sure. at one time right. you know i would get up in the morning and right away light up a mm -hmm. cigarette and um which now it just it's hard to imagine that but that was uh that was the the norm that i had developed mm -hmm. and uh now you know that just seems reprehensible and it just seems uh like something that I wouldn't want to do at all, but well, you've moved past it yeah. through these incremental steps, yeah. and that's the key word. There is incremental. Mm -hmm. Incrementalism is the key to most successes in life that I've found. And so what I what I did, I just began to slowly enact some restrictions here and there. So rather than smoke first thing in the morning, I would make myself wait till I was on the way to work, maybe. And then I did that for a while. A while. And Week, then I would. Weeks. I don't. I can't really say. Just it, guess, like a few it, weeks. It might have been months. Okay. Perhaps months, maybe maybe longer. And that became a new habit. 
Fine. over time right. of that I that I didn't smoke right away. I, I was re- restricting myself a little bit. I sure. still smoke, mm-hmm. but I didn't do it first thing in the morning. Well, you were beginning to practice, because a lot of times people think it's just stopping a habit, but you were actually forming a new way that you interacted with a habit. Mm-hmm. You still smoked. And creating it, new neural nets. Right, and a new normal mm-hmm. that was a limitation because the mm-hmm. doctor was like, well, you just need to quit smoking. Okay, but I've got to get myself mm-hmm. from here to there, yeah. and I'm not a he-man that can just jump the thing in a single bound. I've got to put these daily you know, limitations mm-hmm. to myself, and so that's mm-hmm. what he did. Yeah, maybe you've got or on the verge of diabetes or have diabetes, mm-hmm. and you, you, you're going to and getting a big, mm-hmm. big gulp or some sort of big soda every day uh you might be have a pretty strong addiction in that area sure but rather than just say i'm stopping it completely which you know that's a good thing if you can sustain it but it's usually i i found more successful you're more likely to have success if you just start incrementally decreasing what you're doing well, because you're, like you said, you're built, you're changing the way your brain is wired, and it's taken you all the years that it's taken you to get to the way you've done it. And so it's just going to take some time. And he didn't go and make the declarative, declarative statement and say, I'm not going to do this or I am going to do this. Mm-hmm. He just said, I'm going to limit myself rather than get up first thing in the morning and do this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make myself wait mm-hmm. like. Parents make their kids wait Mm -hmm. for certain things. We're not going to eat candy now because we're going to eat supper in 30 minutes. And then after that, maybe you can have some candy. It's just a limitation. Mm -hmm. And it was a a measure of control Mm -hmm. rather than... Gradually building the self-control muscles. Yes, through these incremental things because you would get up and just light up. And so there was no control um, over that. And, And then you imposed what control... That mm-hmm. you you grew your control because you said, mm-hmm. well, I'm still going to smoke, but I'm going to make myself wait however long you made yourself wait. And he did that for weeks or months or however yeah. long. And so when he got comfortable or that became the new normal, the space and the consciousness to say, hold on, I'm not going to lead with addiction. I'm going to think about this. I'm going to create some space between getting up and first choosing to do it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to tackle the strong man of my whole entire addiction in one fell swoop, I do have some power and choice and control between inside of this whole thing of making myself wait an hour or two Mm -hmm. or however long it was. Right. And then I gradually began to increase it. It would be, people would realize the futility and the lack of wisdom in just deciding, if, if you've been a couch potato and uh, not doing any exercising, not eating right, and you're going to go to the gym and try to bench press 250 pounds. <laughs> you're going to die. That's not going to be a good idea. Right. You pull but, something. But you could, and, and people understand that, that you've got to build up to that. And if you do build up to it gradually, then, yeah, it, you make that a sure. doable thing. It's possible, just not in 30 minutes. Yeah, but mm-hmm. if you if you start out with less and you gradually put more and more weights on, more and more um, restricting of yourself. And more, you have compassion for your muscles. Yeah. That you're not expecting the impossible out of muscles you haven't built. Mm-hmm. That's like sitting on the couch all this time and then deciding you're going to run, run a 20-mile mm-hmm. exactly. marathon. Is, is you running a marathon possible? Yes. Is it running a marathon with no training? Where you haven't built your mm-hmm. your muscles and you haven't built have your cardio. Have not built. Have not built. Right. All of this. Right. In, You've got to build it. Whether you're talking about physical muscles or physical stamina, it's the same thing when you're talking about mental or spiritual muscles. Mm-hmm. That those things have to, emotional, self control muscles. Sure. Those things have to be built like muscles, muscle memory, and so you. It's 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 a it's more of a strategic, wiser strategic I way I believe to to ensure success. If you will think of it more in terms of the long game and incrementalism of eating the camel or, or whatever <clears throat> elephant. one elephant one bite at a time, rather than try to 
conquer the whole thing at once. Well, and it's kind of like on the Hunger Games. I don't know how many of you have seen the Hunger Games movie, but she had to fight to the death in this game, these games. And part of the success wasn't just killing all the people and being the end victor. You had to cultivate allies, mm -hmm. sponsors, that when you got in a bind in the games, they would send you the ointment, the water, the food, the weapon, the thing that you needed. And it's, it's like that with this. You're not alone. You don't have to fight the battle alone. When you build the muscle memory of a new habit, you are building the allies of your muscles. You're building the allies of a new thought process, a new mindset, a new way of seeing the problem. All of these are allies that you get on your side and you build with you on the journey to addressing the habit once you have these allies of a new habit, a new mindset, a new thought process. One of the mindsets that I saw him develop through this was consciousness of what he was, I was doing mention that. yeah when he when he smoked mm -hmm. talk about that a little bit. well bef before i got there i gradually limited myself more and more i didn't always stick to that 100 percent of the time mm -hmm. but as a general rule i started pushing pushing the moving the football down the field or, or moving the goal post if you will the time frame of like it started out maybe that i waited till eight in the morning to have a cigarette and then I made myself wait till 10 in the morning. And then for probably quite a while, I made myself wait till noon before I could have my first one and that after might lunch. Have, that might have been a year. It, it might have been. It was, it was over a course of quite a bit of time. And it, he didn't make a bunch of different changes. Mm -hmm. Like he did this for quite a while. He still smoked and the doctors would have still said, well, you need to quit smoking. Yes. Look, dude. I'm working this the, the way that I know how, yeah. the way that works for me where I feel in control of the process because if I just have to try to pull on willpower alone without these mechanisms, then I'm going to likely fail against this lifelong habit of addiction. Yeah, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Right. And uh, some success time. is better than no success. Right. And yeah, you're actually making this achievable. I mean, you're make you're taking something that maybe is some insurmountable challenge again, smoking, losing weight, uh, learn, uh, getting a degree, or uh, learning to, to master piano or whatever it is, or language, whatever you're trying to do. He pointed to me when he said losing weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. So basically, when it, in terms of uh, the smoking thing, mm -hmm. I just gradually did that and I got to where rather than smoke the whole cigarette I would just maybe take a few puffs off of it or maybe smoke only half of it rather than and then I would maybe it don't taste so good but maybe smoke half of it and put the thing out and then later on that day smoke the rest of it some sometimes I would do that to myself one of the important things though whatever deal you make with yourself stick with that and Otherwise, your your mind, your body, and other people, you will have no credibility. Well, but you didn't make these big old long no, I drawn didn't. out deals for the future. I made like little agreements with myself for maybe the morning, the afternoon, mm -hmm. or the day. Yes, you did that for a long time. And then ultimately, what I what I did that Julie mentioned is that I started. I thought to myself, okay. <laughs> What I'm going to do, and I don't know what brought this on, but I thought, I'm not going to uh, tell myself I've got to quit. I'm going to keep smoking. But here's the deal. Here's the agreement. Every time that you smoke a cigarette, you have to only be doing that. You have to. You can't be smoking and talking on the phone or Drinking doing coffee. other things. You have to totally, 100%, devote yourself only to that task at that time. And that when you're doing it, I wanted to make myself concentrate and focus upon only that at that moment. To that be fully conscious. Fully of conscious. That practice. And so I would light it up, put it in my mouth, and I would concentrate and I would think about sucking the smoke into my lungs and I would totally focus upon that activity and nothing else to the best. And having the smoke in his lungs and whatever that was meaning, you know, he got to where he would cough a whole lot, and it sounded like that Gollum character on Lord of the Rings. Well, well, I mean, it it just got to where it sounded like 
he had a lot of junk in his lungs, mm-hmm. and so when he was conscious and would take the puff and pull that smoke in, he would think about the smoke going into his body and being in his lungs and having whatever effect that it was having, I, and then breathe it out, like I a meditation. To, I took smoking out of the shadows into the light. That's right. And I made, I forced myself to face the, the light of it. And the truth. And so, and as I did, as I totally concentrated on taking a drag and thinking about, trying to think about nothing else but that, what I'm doing at that moment of sucking that cigarette smoke into my lungs, almost immediately it began, the way I felt about them began to change, go through a metamorphosis and an evolution. And I over... I, it didn't take long of doing that, maybe some weeks, or maybe if that long. I thought, you know, I, I don't, I don't really want to be this type person anymore. So my identity, my ideas about myself and my identity began to change, and about what I was comfortable doing and being began to change as I began to take these small steps, and I, then I began to make, try to make this totally conscious, and. Uh, so and then I didn't say, okay, I'm gonna quit. I'm gonna tell everybody I'm quitting smoking cigarettes, and I'm gonna do or this even, big ritual. Or and throw even them. himself or me. He never. And and to this day, I haven't ever committed. I, there I made no commitment to not smoking. Right. And so there is no ban. Yes. There is no vow. If he decides to right. start smoking exactly. now, after three and a half, four, and four, a half, four and, and a half, half years. years of not having a cigarette. Mm-hmm. You know, would he lose ground if he lit up now? Yeah, he would feel like he lost ground. But yeah. w- it, has he made a vow or made a promise to himself or God? No. no. So there is, there's not that added weight. The idea sometimes is if I make this promise or vow, then I'll be, I'll feel bound to it to keep it. Well, if it's something that we can do, well. But a lot of these things, when we're dealing with addictions, we're not just dealing with a physical addiction. We're dealing with the way doing something makes us feel emotionally, Mm -hmm. whether we're emotionally eating, sugar eating, whether we're gossiping, whether we're couch potatoing. I mean, whatever the thing is, there is our mindset, our beliefs about ourselves, Mm -hmm. and the way we feel physically, um, our body, and the way we feel emotionally. All of that is tied up in one big ball with the activity Mm -hmm. in ways that we don't see and we don't understand. That's why that that exercise was so powerful when he would focus consciously on simply smoking the cigarette and make every aspect about that conscious. Mm -hmm. Do I think I make myself more healthy by Mm -hmm. pulling this into my lungs and blowing this out into the world? Am I making the world a better place? I mean, not to put a bunch of blame or guilt or anything on himself, but just making the process conscious. Just, yeah, forcing myself to be honest Mm -hmm. and conscious about the whole thing. And if, if your thing is uh, overeating or whatever, if you, I think this would be a good idea. Uh, if people wouldn't want to do it, but to turn off the television, to set down the phone, and concentrate on every bite right. that you put in your mouth and chew it a certain number of times and and be very conscious. <laughs> I agree. Of that whole, you know, the bag of Cheetos or whatever it is. I agree. Of I'm going to focus on this Cheeto. And I'm going to focus well, on this Cheeto. Or and the funny thing about it, my weight has fluctuated. I lost 45 pounds. and Wish I, I had some Cheetos right well, now. Well, I do too. <laughs> I wish I could eat them. I've lost 45 pounds and then I've gained it back because of I had a health issue that caused me to get off carbs and sugar and dairy. And it went a little extreme. And then I started a job and I chose to start eating some carbs, healthy carbs. But just because it's healthy doesn't mean it doesn't add calories. And so my weight has fluctuated back and forth on this. But I, I know how to do it now. And I can honestly say that when I sit down to watch a movie or something pleasurable because I've worked and I deserve, and I'm not saying you don't deserve your pleasure moments. I mean, you got to get through life. Somehow we just have to moderate the pleasure response. But if I go get a bag of Cheetos and I sit down and watch my favorite movie, guess what's going to happen in about 10 minutes? I'm gonna, If I'm not conscious of it and I'm just going like this, mm-hmm. I'm going to eat every single ch- thing right. in that bag. Whereas when I started eating, and even now, even though I've gained the weight back, I still have a limitation on myself. I'll say to myself, I will have a bag of Lay's that's the, the you say fun size, 
the mm-hmm. <laughs> the lunch size. Mm-hmm. I don't go buy the big bag and sit there and eat. I'll have a little bag of Lay's, mm-hmm. ma- and maybe I shouldn't be eating the Lay's at all. It's a limitation. Yeah. Because I would be twice yeah. as big as I am yeah. now if I didn't have that limitation. You're being pragmatic and realistic right. and practical, and you you are creating these small successes sure. and building, leveraging Control. those into a mm-hmm. to bigger successes. And yeah, like she said, I never have even committed to stop smoking. What I what I did was, as I said, you know, I would make myself be in the moment and conscious and focus upon what I was doing. And then I got to the point, I thought, okay, I'm going to not have a cigarette today. And then the next day, I thought, I'm going to continue that, and I'm not going to smoke today either. And so pretty quick, I mean, it wasn't easy at all. I can't underscore that. It's not easy. I felt like kicking him down the stairs for the first year and a half. It is really tough. Right. But... (laughs) I, I just took it a day at a time. I mean, that, that phrase is irritating, gets overused, but that's what I try to do. I mean, it's true. a day at a time, and then a week at a time, and a month mm-hmm. at a time. Because, because it turns into that. That's what I did. The first, turn into that. After so many days, I thought, well, I think I can do a week. And uh, so I made it a week, and I thought, well, I might do another week. And so I did another week, and I thought, you know, I think I could do a month, and so I did that, and I thought, well, I think I'll do it. And each time, here, let me tell you one other thing, because this, I think this was pretty important about it, because again, um, I didn't put a ban on myself, exactly. I would make these small agreements of, yes. I won't smoke today, today or, or this week, or right. whatever, or this month. And then I would reevaluate it, and usually, then I would extend it some, yep. right. and I just kept extending it. but. Uh, I had a pe- pack of cigarettes and a lighter up in my studio that sat up in there for um, two years, two and a yeah, half, yeah, or maybe more. Because one time I thought, okay, I've I've got to have one, and I went to the store and I bought it, and I went home, and then I I talked myself out of it after you had been not smoking mm-hmm. for a while, and I okay. talked, and I didn't I didn't smoke it, but I what I started doing. I ended up giving the cigarettes away, but... Never having smoked one of them. Yeah, I didn't smoke them. But what I would do, and it's still occasionally I do this, and this is where imagination is beneficial, because I think, okay, let's say, okay, you want, you want a cigarette right now. So I will imagine in my head, I get in my vehicle, and I drive down to the store, and I walk in there, and... I walk out of the store with a pack of pay for them and walk out of the sick the store with the cigarettes I I open the cigarettes and pop one in my mouth and light it up and take a big long drag and imagine what I'm feeling and thinking at that moment the good and bad yeah and what I'm what I do at that mm-hmm. moment I and I'm I try to make be as realistic and honest as I can at that moment, what do I feel? What do I think? What once I take that big long drag, what am I feeling? Regret. Because he's blown his record. I feel regret, and it does not taste as good as it used to. I'm disappointed. The fix I really didn't get the fix that I wanted. I know that this will be the case. That if I I'm not, I will not be satisfied like I would like to be, and then I've blown my winning streak. Well, and there's two things with that. Using your imagination to put yourself in the scenario of giving in to your desire only works when you've spent time practicing a different reality and building up your self-control muscles and giving yourself time to get over the physical addiction. Because if, well... I mean, uh, I don't. I don't think I. I still crave. I, I'm not saying yeah. you don't crave them. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that, and I don't know the time, the time frame of of the true addiction in your body, but we're hardwired in such a way, and I'm not a brain scientist, but we're hardwired in such a way that our habits, what we're doing, you still kind of have a, a, I don't know what the word is. He still chews gum. 
Oh yeah. I mean, he drops. still has this the the the, the thing I like like he you know he still has oral that fixation. well oral fix fixation because even as a little kid he would chew on pin caps and it was part of the kind of anxiety nails. and all of that. So those things are still in place. He still has that. But in terms of the nicotine addiction, the full blown raging nicotine addiction in his body, I would say, you know, I don't know what two months to get certain things cleared out. I don't know. It's, I'm For just me, throwing it, out. it seemed like it was longer than well, that. It's the first couple of years are pretty rough. But see, but I'm not saying I'm st I'm trying to deal with the actual physical mm -hmm. addiction I'm because not sure. when he says pretty rough, he's still dealing with a mental mm -hmm. desire that is tied to physiological addiction and a sense of gratification and reward. Exactly. So reward. it's so it's not just a physical addiction. It's a hardwiring of all of that yes. pleasure center of reward and coping, all of that. Coping device, yes. reward system. Yes. And so it's not just the physical yes. addiction, but that's the thing that has to be addressed first. And what you did you didn't commit to quitting. Mm -hmm. What he did commit to was making it conscious and imposing limitation yes. on himself. Yes. He did make those commitments. I did. And so I have never smoked, but I have had, I've loved Dr. Pepper all my life. And when I dropped the 45 pounds, I wasn't going anywhere remotely near a Dr. Pepper, anything like that. I got off sugar. But now that I've worked, I've started, and my health has improved, I can actually, for good or bad, eat and drink some things now that I there for a while I couldn't because of my health and I go back and forth on this thing with Dr. Pepper even now but what I've built the self discipline muscle the self control muscle I've built it enough now that if I put a ban on myself and sometimes I do that not too long ago I think it ended last Sunday I put a two week ban on myself that I was not going to have any kind of coke or ginger ale or anything like that for two weeks and I obeyed it because I not because I just have great self-control I built that muscle I put that ban on myself mm -hmm. and then after I fulfilled that ban the day it was fulfilled I went and got me a large coat Dr. Pepper and then I said like when the Monday when Monday came I said today on Monday I'm not gonna have a Dr. Pepper today and I didn't and then I said on Tuesday I'm not gonna have a Dr. Pepper today and then when Wednesday came which was my day off I thought I'll have a Dr. Pepper today and I had one and so sometimes what happens, especially if I have a hard day at work or, or something else, then I'll, if I don't put a ban on myself, I may have a meat, but here's what I did. I think I've had a Dr. Pepper in the last three days, not today, but I limit myself even in having the Dr. Pepper rather than get a large, I made myself get a medium. And I know people might laugh at that and say, you're still drinking Dr. Pepper. We're, but the concept that we're trying to get over to you is you build the self-control muscle by making it conscious and limiting yourself. Yes. And so, like today, I'm not going to have anything because we don't. I don't have any here, and we don't spend money. We do our best to avoid spending money on Sabbath. Tomorrow, it's up in the air. But if I do have one tomorrow, what I'm going to do is for the next week, I'm going to say because I had several this week, I'm going to say no more for a week. And I typically go week to week like that. And whatever ban, whatever deal I make with myself. And usually what works best is daily. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, that's something else, you know, it's kind of a, it's on topic, I guess. But the scripture has things that it says you shall do certain things. You shall love your neighbors yourself, a positive commandment. And then there's negative commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall, you know, not do such sure. and such. Uh, but then there are things in the scripture that are... Um, what's, what's the word? Variable, that they are subjective. It says, don't eat too much honey. <laughs> it says, honey is good, but it says, don't eat too much honey. It According doesn't to tell, who? doesn't tell you how much <laughs> is too much honey. Right. So it's subjective, and it's going to depend upon, in, in today's vernacular, in, in culture, we would say, don't eat too much sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Don't eat too much sugar. It's not good so for you. you're gonna, in other words, you're gonna have to put some limitation on right. yourself when it comes to sugar, right. not just sugar. Like when it came to the king, there are commandments that it says that the king shouldn't have too many wives, 
or too, too much many too many horses, horses that you shouldn't multiply money too much too much silver or gold that and it doesn't say how much is too, too much. many women or horses or <laughs> or uh, or money but there's a limit and it it varies I think from person to person that some people can can handle more of different things than than other people can and you just have to figure out what what is appropriate for all things are lawful not all th things are profitable so you have to uh, implement some limitations and bef well and that takes practice mm -hmm. that just takes it giving does. yourself I mean we go again striker. building the muscles well it's like strike or gutter ball it's like we want to do everything mm -hmm. and ha be like Genghis Khan and have no self-control to being the self-control guru and I mean you absolutely can have these conditions in your life you can achieve your goals it's just going to take longer to get there but you don't pole vault over the hard parts mm -hmm. You daily build it, and and people say, well, I don't have enough focus or motivation or willpower to do that. That's the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. Just don't put too much weight on yourself, or right. too much. Don't put too much of a ban on yourself. Just do these small limitations yes. over a longer period of time. It's just like a bodybuilder or yes. running the race. You know, sooner or later, if you just keep doing this day by day mm -hmm. by day, you're going to go out there like one day. Um, I had lost the weight and I wasn't even running so I, I my cardiovascular system sh wasn't in great shape but I was at the front of Walmart and I needed something at the back of Walmart and they she was checking us out and so I ran back there trying to beat get back before she ended up checking us out and so I jogged I ran and this was back when I'd lost the weight because of the daily limitation at that time of no carbs no sugar and no dairy I went back there jogging, and I didn't go at a dead run. I just jogged, but I jogged all the way back to the store, all the way to the front of the store with whatever it was I had, and I wasn't even winded. And mm -hmm. it shocked me what I was able to do because of the daily limitation that I had been imposing on mm -hmm. myself. Well, and, you know, I've talked with people in the past, and, and I'm, not, I, I'm, no, I'm not proficient in Hebrew or anything. I find it interesting, and I know some about it. But people I've talked to in the past, a lot of people, they have these ideas that, and they think, well, I, I could never learn that. I could never learn Hebrew. I could you never can. learn to read. And I'll say, don't try to learn Hebrew. Right. Learn a letter. Right. This week, right. devote yourself to, I'm going to learn, can, you can learn a letter, right? Sure. Yeah. Anybody can do that. So this week, learn, learn the olive. Learn how to pronounce the olive and write the olive. And what it means. And, yeah, learn about it. Basically. And then and then build on that and then the bet and the gimbal mm -hmm. and so on. Or um well I never could play an instrument. I that's just too complicated. I don't think I can uh you know, it hurt it hurt my fingers when I try to play sure guitar. It does, yeah, it's going it to and it's yeah. gonna sound like crap and it's gonna hurt. Yeah. And just realize that you no pole vaulting over that. Yeah. Over the hurt and it sounding bad and over the you can't you, you in order to get to the fun part of this and where it flows you you've got to go through that first and one of the things that I've talked about before um, I do prison ministry and I've asked the guys before I will I will ask a question like which would you rather have okay would you prefer that I write you out a check for one thousand dollars and give it to you right now or give you a penny and tomorrow give you two pennies double it every day double that penny every day for one month and usually the you know I remember a guy said you know we're not stupid we take the thousand dollars <laughs> and and that seems like the wise thing to do but it, it's not the wise thing to do that's short-sighted mm -hmm. because what is just merely a, a penny something seemingly insignificant you continue to double it let's let's walk through it so I put a, a penny in your hand, and so you've got you've got a penny. You've got nothing there virtually. Uh, and the, but the next day, I put another one. I put two, so you've got three. And the next day, I put four and sixteen. And we look at what you've accumulated after a week, and you've just got a handful of pennies there. <laughs> Until not much you can do with that. And so it's like this was a bad deal. My fingers are sore. And the guitar sounds like crap, or I'm craving cigarettes, and I'm not getting anywhere on this, or I'm 
not I've, losing weight. I'm lo- yeah, I'm not yeah. losing weight. I've, right. I've cut down and, and I'm miserable and uh, I'm get, not getting anywhere on right. this. Most people quit because at that stage of looking and saying, okay, I don't have results here. I, my results are menial or, or small, minuscule. Um, but if you can stick with it a little bit longer about that midway point, then compound interest in exponential growth begins to kick in. And then we start seeing some massive improvements right. with, if you continue. And so, again, it's building those muscles in playing the guitar, for example. Don't try to learn how to play the guitar. Right. Learn a chord. Micro, micro goals. Yes. yes. Learn how to play a G, mm-hmm. a G chord. Mm-hmm. So the pinnings. Yes. In the, what next, is it? Next week, learn how to play a C chord. The next week, learn right. how to play. Right. And so, yeah, the, with the pennies, what started out as insignificant and, uh, you know, minuscule results ends up being over $5 million by the end, the end of the month. That's crazy. Now, this isn't, it's not just, that's not fiction that's you can look that up this this is science this is mathematics yeah. this is a not only a physical but a spiritual principle yes. that will work it cannot not work it can't fail it cannot fail if you do this in whatever whatever area you're doing it if you just keep consistently building small things adding in and either adding restrictions or adding greater challenges little by little you will eventually start seeing growth with that. Well, if you if you commit yourself to the process and not the outcome. Yes, exactly. And I'm, I'm not saying don't the journey have, rather than the destination. Well, and I'm not yeah. saying don't have a picture of, a, like if you're wanting to lose weight, to have a picture of somebody in a dress that you want to wear in a couple sizes mm-hmm. less or whatever on your refrigerator is motivation. Yeah. I'm not saying that. Just don't require too much of yourself too fast, particularly when you're tackling lifelong habits. Right. Commit to the process and to the new you, the new you mentally, the mm-hmm. new you emotionally, the new you spiritually, that you are in the process of becoming. That new you can sustain the process long enough to get <clears throat> the result that you're wanting. It's not just about having the result or not having the result. It's about building a different sense of how you engage with the problem, whatever the problem is, or, or the process, how you engage with the process. If you want a different outcome, you have to practice a different process, and mm-hmm. that's okay. That's doable. But you have to focus on the fact that you're not going to have instant gratification, which is really hard in this society because just about anything we want, good or bad, I mean, mm-hmm. we can get it pretty quickly if we want to. and self-control and limitation are not two words that nobody wants to do that little kids don't want to be told they can't have ice cream for dinner but it may be the best thing for them doesn't mean they can't have ice cream Mm -hmm. maybe you give them a little deal of ice cream after they eat a nutritious meal you know that's kind of like with me with the dr pepper i'm at a stage in my life now where i'm allowing myself to drink dr pepper i'm still putting a lot of limitation around it and if I decide that I need to absolutely cut this out I've built those muscles I can do that now I'm just enjoying having some Dr. Pepper mm-hmm. and when I get tired of not being able to fit into my clothes or whatever then I'll I'll make a change but I've gone through the process now where I know how to do that because I've built that in myself mm-hmm. one of anybody the th- can do this one of the thing on this like that I would encourage you to do, like if if it's smoking, for example, and let's say you've gone, maybe you've gone a couple of weeks or a month without a cigarette, take the money that you would have used for that and go out and reward yourself somehow. Yes. Do Because c- yes. what you're going to feel like if you're trying to lose weight, and, and remember, you're going to go through a process of you're not going to see any results. Or they're going to be small right. of the smoking. You're going to feel like you are having something withheld from your. You're going to be deprived. deprived. You're going to feel deprived of something, and you are. 
uh, or if you're yeah. trying to lose weight and you're sure. you're limiting your food, right. you're gonna. So that you no way around that. But Just what add you can, something back. What you can do mm -hmm. is reward yourself in another area right. and begin to create right. a more healthy alternative that is a reward. Yes. And for you know for me, one of the things that I've done, it may not be the best thing, but I get, I get sugar sugar free gum and I chew chew on sugar-free gum or I, I I get sugar-free cough drops I've kind of like those things and so he eats them like candy so that's the next thing we're gonna have to work I on. kind of do but at least it's uh, they seem to be relatively uh, harmless is in terms of that he chews this gum like a banshee warrior we'll be driving down Might the be highway a slight exaggeration a slight exaggeration but I mean, if you're gonna, you can chew it with great gusto and keep your lips together. We'll be driving down the highway, and, mwah, 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 and I'm like, close your mouth. He drives me a little bit crazy in it. Speaking of closing your mouth, <laughs> but I would much rather have to deal with that than to have to deal with you smoking because. Yeah. And I never nagged him because no, it's got. Not too bad on that. Well, no, I, I really. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't. Well, and if you just listen the first time, there won't be much nagging. But. I realized that this was such a lifelong thing for you that you were the only way that you were going to do it is you had to want to do it now I did pray that God would cause him to want to do what was going to be best for him I did pray that and I think that maybe he might have prayed that God would help him mm -hmm. oh yeah I definitely did and and so yeah. you know help my mindset help Help me see myself with a different identity. Help me desire mm -hmm. a different reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all these prayers that we can pray mm -hmm. rather than, you know, cause me to quit smoking. And mm -hmm. I know that there's no. miraculous things where God can deliver people. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, most of us have to go through these steps and do the hard work ourselves. But he definitely can help us desi with our desire to have a different outcome. Right. I hope, uh, I hope this has done some people some good and I hope that maybe we've given you a different way of thinking about it whether it's smoking or whatever it is whatever goal in your life you're trying to do of rather than trying to tackle some big thing of if you're if you decide you're gonna uh, paint a room don't go in there and get crazy with it um, all paint at on once every wall. no I, I recommend paint one wall completely, completely. finish it yeah and, and you'll, you'll limit, be like, you'll limit think, yourself. okay, wow, that looks really good. And then you're motivated to go further. And it's like, because you've got a success there, a small success. Right. Now I'm going to do that. But if you go in there just willy nilly ho and just hog wild and you start painting whatever and you, without finishing it off neatly and, and then you've got to go back and, and fix all this and cl clean it up. You, you haven't maintained order and you've let it get chaotic then you, you're going to probably wear yourself out and then it may set that way for weeks mm -hmm. or months before you finally uh you've run out of motivation, motivation. but yeah. if you if you break these things down of learning a letter learning a chord or losing losing one pound uh yeah. not not smoking a cigarette until okay. 10 o'clock mm -hmm. or noon then you you maintain that for a little while and you will begin to have results that you can build upon well and those are things that you're in control of and those are things you absolutely can do mm -hmm. they're small successes and what absolutely you, realistic yes and it's what you need is to have small successes remember rather it, than a great big failure you need to have multiple small successes and it cannot fail if you do that it if you if you do it in that way uh, maintain that principle it will succeed now some 30 some 60 100 some yeah. hundred fold you know who knows what the sure. the level of success will be but you will experience success in different areas of your life with um, more of an incremental approach right. to things rather than trying to do too the, much too something soon. that's impossible right. for you where right. you're at God bless you, everybody. Hope you, like I said, hope you've got something out of it. Be sure to like and su subscribe and share the video with people that, if you know somebody that's trying to quit smoking or trying to lose some weight or trying to um, trying to accomplish a goal that they've got, and you think that this video might be an encouragement or have some insights that they might benefit with, uh, benefit them. Uh, 
pass it along to them. And share your small successes in the comments. And yes. Really nothing yeah, we'd is, love to hear them. Yeah, because nothing's really too small. If you say, I went a day without doing something, or I went half a day, or I went an hour, and yeah. I haven't gone an hour without doing something. Right. Exactly. Take the small win, because exactly. that's exactly what win. it is. It is a win. Take the win, guys. Right. Thanks. See ya. There we go. See how loud that is? Do a test. Where am I seeing how loud it is? By the sound that just sounded when it went bleep and it nearly broke my eardrum. Oh, that wasn't very loud. <laughs> it at was all. too. But that's okay. A if that's what you want and you want people's <laughs> eardrums to be bleeding. You're crazy. <laughs> so do your test. Hello. Mm. Testing, testing. Don't. <laughs> how come? I've already you know explained that. No, it. I know. I don't know why you do that. You cannot mm -hmm. say certain things with people with families, and maybe it's funny, and maybe it's not. It is funny. Just say ABC testing, one, two, three, testing. Testing, 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 testing. <clears throat> Four score and seven beers ago. Okay. Those are root beers, kids. Yeah, root beers. Wish I had a root beer. I do, too. That sounds mm -hmm. pretty good. Okay, so let's see how this does. All right. <sighs> Hey, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe to be notified whenever we release new content and to help other people find us out there on the vast plains of YouTube land. If you have a question or a topic you'd like for us to do a video about, just leave it in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Later, y'all.